Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome back to another Sanity Stream, the place where you go to gain a little bit of your sanity back in what has become DEFCON 5 here in U.S. American politics. We have ourselves an October surprise. If you like this type of content and you like this podcast, go down below, like, subscribe, share, and of course leave a comment if you feel I deserve it. For those of you who haven't been watching the news, Rudy Giuliani has been sitting on this information that's coming out for over a year. What information? What information? What information? Well, Hunter Biden, Joe Biden, China, Ukraine, Burisma, Russia, mm, nothing too crazy, you know, just just your typical political day, guys. You know, honestly, we should probably just cut the show short. Uh, with that said, wow, 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 wow. So let's get straight into it. So for those of you who haven't been on Twitter lately, you got to see up here in the trending tab, this has been up here since yesterday, Joe Biden did not push out a Ukrainian prosecutor for investigating his son, the Washington Post reports. Now, notice it says reports. What I want to bring attention to is that obviously they're trying to change the narrative. They're trying to change the story. They're trying to say that the information that's being presented, even though it's in actual emails, is not true. But the original story stated the Washington Post reports do you know what it said earlier, guys? Do you want to know what it said? It said confirms. They've now changed it to reports. It said confirms yesterday. I'm sorry. Is the Washington Post the arbiter of truth? Are they the ones that every other major newspaper must push their information through? Because as far as I know, the New York Post has been around since the 1800s, I believe. That's a long time. Why do they have to go through the Washington Post to verify the authenticity of the document? Absolute insanity. But we can't expect any better, guys. These tech oligarchs are going. They will do everything. And you know what? I stated this in a previous podcast. The amount of propaganda, the Soviet-style propaganda that you are going to be seeing over the next 20 days, which is about, what, it's 21 days till the election. Until the election ends, the amount of of just soviet style propaganda that you are going to be seeing from the corporate news these big tech media oligarchs is going to hit a level that you will not even believe and for those normies who have been just sheep their entire life just covering their eyes their eyes wide shut and simply refusing to believe what us trump supporters and us people on the right have been saying and disaffected liberals and honestly, our group of patriots is amazing. We might not agree on everything, but we understand that we don't want communism. And we don't want fascism, real fascism, not the Antifa, you know, everything's fascism, everything's a white supremacist, everyone's a Nazi. No, like real authentic fascism and, and authoritarianism. We know that this must be stopped at every single turn. This type of stuff, when it is so blatant and so obvious, is going to red pill your normie friends like nothing ever will. With that said, let's get into the next one. For those who haven't seen, and this is just the fallout from the story. I haven't even gotten to the story yet, guys. This is just the fallout. So this stuff gets pushed out that Hunter Biden is connected with Burisma. He's also now being connected with China and a firm with an email being reported that he had stated to his sister that he needed she needed to bring money to the family and that he wasn't getting the recognition he deserves. Oh my god, it's insane. Twitter had previously blocked users from tweeting the link to New York Post story on Hunter Biden. So we put it on our website for you to read and share. Click share and retweet. That's from the House Judiciary GOP. They blocked the House Judiciary GOP yesterday. And then they later stated today that it was an error. Get out of my face. Something needs to be done about Twitter. We need to march on Twitter. We need to group around Twitter. We cannot allow these tech oligarchs to control our speech. Because this is ultimately what it's about. 
Why should they receive platform protections and not be allowed to be sued if they are going to be arbiters of truth? This is insanity, and it is only affecting people on the right. And if you don't believe me, just wait till the end of this podcast, because unfortunately, ladies and gentlemen, it gets worse. It gets much, much worse. But don't worry, guys. Hopefully, we'll have some redemption. Hopefully, for the love of God, these pussy, loser, GOP, swamp rats will actually do their job for once. The Lindsey Grahams, the Jim Jordans, the McConnells, the Gowdies, these people that that you think are your friend, they don't give a fuck about you. They don't care about you. They don't give one iota about you. What they care about is money and power. Most of these people that are in the Republican Party have the same vested interests of the Democrats. They are the same thing. Everything that you are witnessing is just political theater. You know why? Because none of the bigwigs, none of the big bosses ever go to jail. It's always the small time people. They always find a way to get away from justice. And they're all in on it. And it's just a big game. And we're not in it. So wake up. Vote these rhinos out. They are not the vested interests of the American people. But we'll see. We'll see. I mean, they brought in Zuckerberg. What happened with that? Absolutely nothing. Nothing. All political theater. From the Wall Street Journal. Senate to subpoena Twitter CEO over blocking a disputed Biden articles. Moved by GOP lawmakers on Judiciary Committee follows social media platform's decision to limit sharing of New York Post report. The Senate Judiciary Pl- Committee plans to issue a subpoena on Tuesday to Twitter Incorporated Chief Executive Jack Dorsey after the social media company blocked a pair of New York Post articles that made new allegations about the Democrat presidential nominee Joe Biden, which his campaign has denied. Actually, I don't even know if that's true. The Wall Street Journal here. I don't even know if that's true. They're they're denying it. I don't I don't think they actually denied it. I don't think they made a comment on it. So, fact check me on that one. Fact check me. Actually, do the research and don't listen to these one of these fact checkers. It's all BS, guys. But you know that. I'm I'm, I'm preaching to the choir here. So this is a continuation of the article that was posted yesterday by the New York Post, and um, we're going to be following it up together. Email reveals how Hunter Biden tried to cash in big on behalf of family with Chinese firm. Hunter Biden pursued lucrative deals involving China's largest largest private energy company, including one that he said would be interesting for me and my family. Emails obtained by the Post show. One email sent to Biden back in May 13, 2017 with the subject line expectations included deemed Details on remuneration packages for six people involved in unspecified business ventures. Biden was identified as chair and vice chair, depending on agreement with CEFC, an apparent apparent reference to the former Shanghai-based conglomerate CEFC, China Energy Co. His pay was pegged at eight fifty, and the email also noted that Hunter had some office expectations. He will elaborate. A provisional agreement in which 80% of the equity or shares in the new company would be split equally among four people whose initials correspond to the letter of the three participants, with H apparently referring to Biden. The deal also listed 10 to Jim and 10 held by H for the big guy. Who do you think the big guy is? Who do you think the big guy is, guys? Just a question. Got some more pictures. What is this guy? (sighs) Here we go. Hopefully this is the smoking gun, ladies and gentlemen. Chairman changed the deal with me in Miami to a much more lasting and lucrative agreement to create a holdings company. 50% owned by me and 50% owned by him. 
consulting fees in one piece of our income stream, but the reason this proposal by the chairman was so much more interesting to me and my family is that we would also be partners in equity and profits from JV's investments. And I'll link to the, f actually, you know what? I can't even link to the full article because we already know what's going on in YouTube, guys. We already know. Or maybe you don't. Maybe you don't know. But take a look. Here is a list of channels on YouTube that have been permanently terminated today. Today is 10-15-2020. Permanently deleted. Now, I, I only know actually a couple of these. One I've watched before but kind of fell off, but I have watched him before. Destroying the Illusion, Red Pill 78, Praying the Medic, Joe M, iPod, X22. All these people have all been deleted from YouTube. All of them. A massive YouTube nuke destroying all of these channels. Coincidentally, all of them being on the right. Imagine my shock. I don't know. I feel like I, I feel like I'm 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 talking to a brick wall, unfortunately, because I don't trust the Republicans to do what's right. Uh, they're gonna send another strongly worded letter. They're going to subpoena these big tech oligarchs, and then they're going to throw little mittens at them when they show up. They're not going to have the FBI go in there. They're not going to have people kicking in doors. They're not going to have people getting data. They're not going to have any of that. None. Zero. Nada. And I don't expect any changes. Trump himself stating yesterday that he wanted to se Section 230 removed. How are we going to communicate? This is how we won the last election social media and now they're going out of their way to interfere in an election this is absolute insanity they do not deserve platform protections and i would be one of the last people to say that big big government has to go in and now now basically put the red tape around big corp or at least big uh big social media right and yet here I am pushing for it because there doesn't seem to be any other way uh, to fix this issue. It's insane. It's insane. And these people, these rhinos are not fighting back. Like I said before, McConnell, Lindsey Graham, Trey Gowdy, uh, Jim Collins. Collins, right? Jim Jordan, rather, who a lot of people seem to think are on our side. They're not. He's not. That's why... Jim Jordan was pu pushing back against those antitrust lawsuits. He was—he didn't want them opened up because he's protecting these people. So stop pretending like these people are your friends. They're not. They're not your friends. They don't give a fuck about us. They don't care. And if Trump doesn't win, if Trump doesn't win this coming election, I am done with the, with the Republican Party. We are going third party. Because I'm done with this. These people have been in power for too long. We need term limits. And I, I heard somebody say the other day, you know, that's that's kind of like a cotton candy fix, right? Term limits are like a cotton candy fix. If term limits are just like a cotton candy fix and they don't actually change things, then why is it we only have a president for eight years? Why does the cha why does the the direction of the of the country change so dramatically when we change presidents? If it's a cotton candy fix, shouldn't we just have the same president every single four years? Shouldn't we be able to vote on the same guy over and over and over again if that's the case? But of course not. So get out, get out of my face that term limits won't work. If they didn't work, then why did they work for the president? They would work just as well in the Senate. They would work just as well in the House. It's BS. These people are servants to us. We are not there. We are the masters, not them. Wake up. And like I said before, you know what? Big tech, it's just so plainly, obviously political. And yet for some, I don't even know, like the, the mental masturbation and, and the mental gymnastics that are required by these lefties to come to their conclusions. They're just they're not real. They're fake. They they are their their cognitive dissonance is is blinding. 
And I really do. I, I really hope that these people are, are good. But I'm really starting to question that because the amount of, of mental latitudes and platitudes you have to get yourself to come to the conclusion that this is all okay and now you're cheering on these big tech oligarchs, you idiots. These people are going to come for you next. You think they care about you? They don't care about you. So just to show you, because they've been pushing, Twitter has been pushing, that because it is hacked, hacked information, it can't be disseminated. It can't be given out. It can't be shared on the platform. And yet, here are 11, 11, here's 11, huh? 11 hacks, leaks, and hoaxes that Twitter and Facebook did not throttle because they hurt Trump. Of course, Jack Dorsey coming out here saying that their communication hasn't been well. That the policy established in 2018, blah, 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 blah. President Trump's call with the Ukrainian president. That got pushed all over Twitter. Didn't care. President Trump's tax returns. That got released. Didn't care. Michael Flynn phone call. That was released. They didn't care. The Steele dossier used for Russiagate. They didn't care. Donald Trump Jr. WikiLeaks emails. Didn't care. Atlantic claims Trump bad-mouthing military. Didn't care. The Atlantic story about a shooting that never happened. Didn't care. Secretly recorded audio of Trump. Didn't care. Secret recording of Melania. Didn't care. Enabling attacks on public officials and right-leaning news figures. Didn't care. And false major media spear smears of Nicholas Sandman. They did not give a fuck. They didn't give a fuck. Fuck these people. We need a march. We need to be out there. Make politicians fear again. Make corporations fear again. I sound like a lefty. Seriously. How is it we cannot speak? They enforce the rules of another nation. You know, Twitter has stated explicitly that they are a globalist corporation. That they want a global network. And yet when they put Twitter into a particular country, they are vested under the rules of that country. Why are they not vested under the rules of the United States? Freedom of speech. What about that? Shouldn't the rules in Twitter in the United States be the most lenient across all nations, given our ability to speak truth? Now, I can understand, like, look. <laughs> I say this over and over again. If you are threatening to cause direct violence to a person or set of persons... Okay. If you are threatening some sort of, you know, bomb or terrorist attack, okay. Again, again, calling for direct violence, okay. We can all get behind that. But there's already laws against that. So it's like you're still living under the laws of the United States. Oh, God, guys. <laughs> I'm losing it. I'm losing it. I'm losing it. I'm just so angry. I'm so... I'm so angry. Unfortunately, you know what? I had told a previous uh, coal factory aficionado that I would end on a happy note. And I didn't set it up. I didn't set up the happy note at the end, guys, unfortunately. So unfortunately, that is the show. <laughs> that is the show. I'm going to just leave you all pissed off and raging. That's That's how we like it, ladies and gentlemen. Just don't... Don't do anything crazy. <laughs> but with that said, if you like this content and you like this podcast, go down below, like, subscribe, share. The Coal Factory is growing every single day. We're working our way up to 500 subscribers. It is a strong grind. We are battling it out. The battle of ideas, ultimately, we will come to the top because the cream always rises to the top. Unless, of course, you have censorship. Oh, God, I am. I'm, I'm, I'm getting triggered. I'm becoming a lefty. Guys, you are watching me. I'm, you're gonna, I'm going to come back. I'm going to have the blue hair dye. You know, it's going to be beautiful. I'm going to be wearing a rainbow shirt. Nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with rainbow shirts. But with that said, if you like this, uh, well, I already said that. I'll see you in the next episode. I love you guys. Peace. Coltrane. Choo-choo.